Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, thank you so much for watching my first video yesterday about the uh, Zenith Chronomaster Sport, a fantastic release by Zenith. Now in this second video with a bit of daylight showing this beautiful glossy dial and uh, classic three-colored registers of Zenith, I wanted to address all the comments comparing this watch to the Daytona, favorably or unfavorably. Some people even use the dirty H word, the homage. And I'm afraid you really know nothing about watches and the history of watches if you use that sort of word, talking about Zenith, which is, you know, it even says here on the dial, El Primero. El Primero means it was the first automatic uh, chronograph back in 1959. And later on, when Rolex wanted to use an automatic chronograph in the Daytona, who did they go to? They went to Zenith and they detuned the high beat chronograph to 4 Hz to put in the Daytona. And then they, re they went and did their own. And, you know, I'm never going to knock the Daytona or any uh, Rolex. What I love about Rolex is the, the styling, the ergonomy, how slim they are, how great they fit, and the durability. And that can, can never be taken away. And I would still love to, to get a Daytona. I wouldn't hesitate, of course. But if you spend five minutes with this watch, you will feel totally differently. I mean, the first impression that I had, yes, because of the ceramic bezel addition and the polished center links, uh, yes, I did think Daytona as well. But then after spending a day with it because of the, the case, the register, the star, and, uh, and most importantly, the, the caliber inside, I really think nothing. And, and I own many Rolex and, you know, the feel of the of the watch of the the very nice uh, bracelet here but it's not to the level of the oyster bracelet uh, it doesn't give me the feel of a, of a Rolex at all it gives me the feel of a, of a very good Zenith sports watch so just for the sake of comparing let's compare so this watch is a bit it's a bit larger 41 but it kept it very thin here very tidy at the lugs so it wears small especially in the black dial uh, version here which I prefer to the, the white one. It's very uh, glossy and it makes the watch look smaller on the wrist. It's uh, yeah, almost petite because the, the bezel has fairly large width. So the, the dial isn't, isn't too large. It wears like a 41, but a small 41. One design that I don't like about the Daytona is that the, uh, the dials at uh, three and nine are not at three and nine. They are pushed way up. So especially on the Arabic dial, Arabic num numerals versions, it's a very awkward relationship to the hour markers. While here, just like on the Speedmaster, they are centered. So to me, it's a lot more pleasing visually. Beyond that, visually also, here you have the uh, pump pushers so ready to get into action, just like on a Speedmaster. And most importantly, the uh, action happens around the dial so you have a tenth of a second revolutionary i can say that uh, scale here so finally a very useful chronograph where the movement runs in relationship to the uh, to the scale so the movement runs at 36,000 vibrations per hour which means 10 beats a second which means you can go to a tenth of a second when you calculate the elapsed time so the seconds hand is very long reaching to the rehort so the rehort has the same scale as the bezel and of course you should not you shouldn't look at the, the dial when you are using the, the chronograph uh, this is the sub dials and the bezel that will give you your your timing you have the seconds here and the minutes there be minutes which are continuously running uh, they don't flick in every minute it just runs continuously and then you have the continuous seconds so since we're, we're comparing with the, the Daytona Daytona has a, a tachymeter scale which probably nobody on the planet still uses it might be very historically correct from when the Daytona thing was uh, invented but nobody's using it and it runs at four hertz which means eight steps per second Again, nobody calculates anything in eighths of a, of a second. So in a way, the Daytona is the most 
desirable professional model of Rolex, but it's also the, the least usable. I mean, it's so unusable that they even put big screws on the pushers so that because they don't think anybody's going to use those, uh, <laughs> the, the, the chronograph function for it. Uh, I use a chronograph a lot on my watches, on my Speedy, for example, or my other chronomaster from Zenit to time how long it takes to get to the office or how long my pasta have uh, have cooked. So I, I like to use my chronographs. And uh, here it's a bit more fun if you're going to time your kids racing, for example, you can go down to the tenth of a second. That's really cool. You don't have to pull out the iPhone for, for that anymore. So yeah, much more usable, much more interesting, high beat, incredible pace here. And it's a brand new caliber, so the 3600. Let's zoom a bit on it with the heat blue screws and it's on display. So the watch is going to be a bit thicker, probably partly because of that, but it keeps a hundred meters of water resistance despite having the, not having screwed down uh, screws around the pushers. So let's turn it around. It's a horizontal clutch, which is, is more show than the vertical clutch of, uh, of Rolex, but it means uh, probably not a smooth an activation of the, the chronograph. So the action is going to happen here and uh, you're going to see here the resetting hammer is going to move this way and when I'm going to reset there's going to be a great action there on the heat blue screw. So let's get it started for you. There you go. You see the, the blue, that's the column wheel here. Heat blue, very original. So the first push to start is is a strong mechanical start and then the stop is is lighter now look at the look here it stopped I'm gonna I'm gonna reset so look at the the blue the blue screw here how it's gonna kick back in I'll do it again for you very cool and then you have the those lovely little wheel is here. It is not finished up to a high haulage standard, of course, uh, neither does Rolex's movement. Uh, this is machined, but um, it would cost $30,000 if it was uh, finished by hand with Geneva seal and, uh, and whatnot. So this movement is really another incredible evolution of the El Primero. Now you have hacking seconds, uh, the day changes at the first click, the time change at the second click. Visually, uh, I have mentioned it already, you have those three colors, which Zenit was doing already in 59. So w when I see it, I Im immediately think Zenit and um, the case as well is uh, very un Rolex like. Very, very Zenit. It, it's quite light, so it's not as uh, solid a bracelet as the Oyster can be. Uh, but, it, but, it's, but it's lovely and it keeps the watch light at 140 grams. So it's very, very wearable. By the way, the, the clasp is, is very nice. It's not too, too thick. It's very secure. Yes, it doesn't have an extension like the EasyLink of Rolex. Uh, you just get five points of anchoring. And I'm probably going to remove one more link and anchor it in the middle so I can uh, easily move it with a toothpick if, uh, if, if need be. It, it's quality, but it's not the luxury item that uh, a Rolex tends to be. So you get once you spend a day with it, you get a very different feel. It's a different kind of thing. It's a, it's a tool. It's a sports watch. It's a very usable sports watch. Let me give you a wrist shot on this video as well. The watch is very comfortable. And uh, two more important differences here. You have uh, obviously anti-reflective coating. I mean, this watch is ultra legible, something of a problem with a Rolex, which never uses AR coating because really it feels like there's no, no crystal at all. And also you will notice the absence of a crown guard, so a bit more in a vintage style, while a Rolex um, being the sort of ultimate luxury tool that it is, does have substantial crown guards to protect the crown. Also here you get a date, so it's Again, very usable. You get uh, loom, not as much, I think, as on the, the Rolex. Here it's only at the, the, the extremities, 
so not enough flume to to my taste but there's enough flume on the on the hands uh, for that one i would give the the advantage to to rolex in terms of being a tool having uh, identity history practicalities and being affordable and being <laughs> and of course being able to buy it you know zenith really uh, really wins in uh, in all those categories, so you know there's no knock on the the Daytona to me with this watch. The Daytona is the Daytona. It's an icon. It's a luxury watch. This is different. This is Zenith at their well at their Zenith. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, anything you want to know in the next video when we talk about again about this watch, and I'll speak to you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.